So, once again, didn't really have time to set up the studio, uh, but um, yeah, dog meat, ever loyal. <laughs> New bestest boy has apparently arrived, or will be arriving, arriving, I should say, when fall actually comes to Magic, which I believe is actually going to be March of next year, I think. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of a lot of different cards coming out, and uh, I think Ixalan's weather season is right around the corner, co corner too, so make sure you're staying tuned for that. Regardless, let's talk about Dog Meat Ever Loyal, a 3-3 Ledge Creature Dog in Naya colors for red, green, and a white. When it enters the battlefield, mill five cards and return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. On top of that, whenever a creature control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, create a junk token. Now... Again, there's so many crazy things happening. I can't remember if junk tokens are actually already a thing. I don't think they are, so they're probably new to Fallout, which would make sense. Regardless, a junk token is an artifact with tap sacrifice this artifact, exile the top card of your library. You may play a card this turn, activate only as a sorcery. So essentially, hey, um, yeah, impulse draw. That's pretty fantastic, actually. And junk is kind of underplaying just how good of an effect that is. Again, Treasures are basically, right, temporary mana, like a burst of mana, temporary mana advantage. This is now temporary card draw. This is pretty fantastic, and yeah, I mean, there is that limitation act villain as a sorcery, so yeah, you can't just do it on an opponent's turn and, you know, hit maybe an instant off the top, but again, most of the time you would be doing it on your turn anyways to ensure that you can still, again, play that card this turn. It does say play, it doesn't say cast, so keep in mind that does include lands. Yes, you can play lands. <laughs> if it said cast, you could not do that. So yeah, doing the money your turn is probably what you'd be doing anyways. So yeah, this has the potential to make a ton, a ton, a ton of junk tokens for you for a ton of impulse draw benefits. And yeah, there's other benefits that you can get from casting things off the top of your library as well, or should I say exiling off the top of your library, then casting. Casting from somewhere other than your hand, I should say. So yeah, again, there is not really a limitation again on that secondary part. Whenever a creature controls enchanted or equipped attacks, you get that effect. So if you have 10 creatures that are all equipped or all auras, uh, or red, enchanted, I don't know why I said aurad. <laughs> It's late in the day. Regardless, if you do that, you can make a ton of junk tokens and yeah, again, get a ton of card advantage from that. Again, no limitation, no like, you know, once per turn or, you know, for each opponent. So keep that in mind. And also, of course, that ETB is great card advantage as well. If you hit an aura equipment in your graveyard, get it back to your hand. Great. And also, um, yeah, very easily usable and abusable in these colors. Now, with all that said, I'm going to be talking about some budget buys and some pricier picks, cards that are less than $1, cards that are more than $1. And yeah, if you are interested in this commander and in those cards, make sure you check out that decklist link in the description below. Decklist link, cardless link. We're getting there. Anyways, let's jump into it. And now let's talk about the budget buys, and just a heads up, if there's some weird sounds going on in the background, yeah, I'm recording in my friend's uh, dining room, and uh, he's currently getting lunch, so uh, yeah, yeah, blame uh, blame Garrett in the comments below. Anyways, first up, we've got Cloud Shift, and <laughs> it's a very single white mana, blink a creature you control. Yeah, again, you've got access to a lot of great blink effects and ways to essentially use and abuse the ETB for our new bestest boy, and yes, a very simple one that can also be used to protect your commander as well, so keep that in mind. So yeah, these kind of blink effects are essentially now also potential card advantage, or should I say like recursion from your graveyard as well. Next up, equipment like leather armor can be very, very, very good with a commander like this. It's equipment for just one mana, it says, Quick Creature gets plus zero plus one, has ward one, so that's some nice protection right there, but most importantly, equip zero. Now, activate only once each turn, that's fine, but yes, again, basically, once you get this equipment in play, it is free for you to equip, so essentially, yeah, get creatures in play, equip them for free, utilize your mana properly, and all of a sudden, again, you can get a ton of junk tokens out there. Next up, take advantage of all those tokens, because again, they are artifacts with something like all that glitters, and aura that can help you out as well. Chant creature for two mana. Chant creature gets plus plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. So this can be a massive boon to whatever creature you attach this to. And again, every single time you attack, let's say you attack again, let's just say with 10 creatures that are all equipped or all have auras on them. Yeah, there you go. That's going to be plus 10 plus 10 from the things that are equipping them. And then also on top of that, on the attack, you're making 10 more. 
So it's going to be another plus 10 plus 10 because you're making those junk tokens. Next up, Graham O'Brien. Paradox, whatever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, create a food token. So basically, hey, when you are casting those cards off the top of your library, again, that is, uh, you know, uh, not your hand. I guess it's not off the top of your library. It's in exile off the top of your library. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, your guess that you're making a ton of food tokens. And again, I've already shown ways, you know, we can benefit from having extra artifacts in play, like all the glitters. We've got other ways as well. So yeah, the more and more food tokens you make, the better. And of course, yeah, you can use those to gain some life as well. But more importantly, yeah, maybe if you got something like Reckless Fire Lever and Reckless Fire Weaver in play, you can take advantage of that even more. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, it's going to deal one damage to each opponent. That is an absurd amount of damage that can be done. Again, if you're attacking with those 10 creatures that are all, you know, modified or whatnot, essentially, hey, um, that's going to be 10 new junk tokens coming into play that is going to destroy your opponents. Again, 10 damage per opponent. And of course, again, if you got Grim O'Brien out there too, you know, casting spells, cool. You, you get even more. You're going to have a lot of artifacts and a lot of things to ping your opponents with. Next up, speed of artifacts, Gearport Aether Grid can be massive, especially if you lean really heavily into equipment because equipment doesn't care if it's tapped or not. Tap to untapped artifacts you control, one damage to any target. So you can save up those junk tokens as well. Tap them essentially to say, hey, um, opponent, let's just burn your face down or your creatures down or your planeswalkers down, whatever you need to take out. This is a fantastic way to distribute damage again with those junk tokens or again with those equipment that don't really care if they are tapped. Moving on, Inspiring Statuary, another way to utilize those junk tokens in a fantastic way. Non-artifact spells you cast have improvised. So if you're casting any non-artifacts, well, you can tap your artifacts for one mana each essentially for those so again you can tap your junk tokens you can tap your equipment you can cast a lot of things very 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 cheaply keep in mind though it's not artifacts though that'd be pretty broken if it was next up rax empress of mars a 5-4 trampion trampling alien warrior battle cry which is nice on top of that whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand you get a 2-2 red alien worker token so again if you are casting spells from that impulse draw from your junk tokens you get a lot a lot a lot of advantage out of that by making an army with this and of course then you can use you know your equipment to equip those creatures and then attack more and make even more yeah this can get out of control and finally hellcat igniter speaking of something that is out of control flying haste so yeah it can swing right away again if you equip right away extra value there pay one a red plus x plus zero turn x the number of artifacts you control this a game ending card again it's got flying so it's probably going to be able to get thrown at least one of your opponents and that opponent is going to be gone because again you can make an absurd amount of junk tokens save those up and all of a sudden this is swinging for like 40 damage and they are just gone Moving on to the pricier picks. Again, cards more than $1. We've got Sisterhood of Karn, a 0, zero Cleric for two mana. Enters the with a counter on it. Top of that, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you double the number of counters on it. Um, yeah, this can get absolutely massive in absolutely no time. Doubling every single time you're casting an impulse drawed card. Yeah, you know what I mean. Casting it from exile. <laughs> Moving on, impending flux. X damage each opponent, each creature they control. X is one plus the number of spells you cast from any rather your hand this turn. You can save up again all of those junk tokens and have a massive turn where you're getting a lot of impulse draw. And yeah, if you've got a lot of mana, if you've got a lot of, again, lowly ground equipment like I talked about, you can cast a ton of spells, cast this, and again, you can foretell it as well, so you can cast this one from Exile as well, and then get a massive effect where you are dealing a ton of damage to opponents and basically wiping out their armies as well, so you can just swing your creatures through and make even more junk tokens. Next up. Hawk of Omens, yet another really fun way to utilize your junk tokens for not just impulse draw, but hey, mana essentially. Tap to untapped artifacts you control, untapped target artifact. Of course, there are other artifacts you might want to untap, but most likely, uh, yeah, uh, like a soul ring, like any kind of a mana rock. Soul ring is basically like with this, hey, tap to untap junk tokens, right? You untap the soul ring, you are getting two mana. So essentially, they're all tapping for one mana. Typically, again, if you've got a mana rock that just taps for one, basically all your junk tokens count for like half a mana each. You've got one that taps for two, essentially, like a soul ring. Cool. They each tap for one, essentially. And of course, you can get even bigger than that, like a Guild of Lotus, etc., etc. But yeah, the potential for this in this kind of a deck can just make things very, very absurd. Again, the more and more junk tokens you make, the better. So of course, with that as well, well, let's talk about... Uh, some ways to use and abuse our commander's other ability. Again, the ETB, Panharmonicon. If an artifact or a creature enters the battlefield, it causes a triggered ability for to, to, to trigger. It triggers this time. Basically doubles up triggers, okay? Let's just say it simply with that. Okay, doubles up your triggers. So when your commander comes into play, when you're using and abusing that ETB, when you're blanking it, yeah, you can get that again and again and again. And essentially, well, get a lot, a lot of cards in your graveyard, into your hand, get your creatures suited up with equipment and auras. And then, of course, teleportation circle. 
Many of your end step eggs up to one target artifact creature control that turns to the battlefield under its own control. Basically, a free blink effect at the end of the turn. This conjures closet, etc. etc. are ways to essentially again get your commander's trigger for free every single turn. You pair the panharmonicon, and you're going to be getting an absurd amount of value. And actually, speaking of value, I forgot to mention Noi Procession, yet another enchantment that you're definitely going to want to consider with this if you got the budget for that very expensive card. Double up your tokens. Yeah, that's quite good with junk tokens. And then we've got Keeper of Secrets. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, it's going to deal damage. That spell is made of value target opponent. So again, yet another value, another benefit from just casting things from those impulse draw cards. So yeah, just extra ways to essentially gain benefits from that. Ways to punish your opponents, and that can take them down quite quickly. Finally, Flaming Tyrannosaurus. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, it's going to deal three damage to any target, and you get a counter on this. And when it dies, it deals damage to the power of each opponent. Um, yeah, basically, hey, uh, you're just going to start, you know, lightning. I was going to say fireballing, lightning bolting each of your opponents, essentially, or you know, their creatures or their planeswalkers, getting this to be absolutely massive. And then, sure, if it gets taken out, it's going to probably take out your opponents as well, dishing out a ton of damage too. So, dog meat, yes, is here. Well, okay, will be here in, uh, I guess, a couple months, most likely. But it's a pretty exciting commander, one that I'm sure many players out there are going to be very excited for. Again, yet another bestest boy, another dog added into magic, and a very cute one at that. And one that, again, has a lot of potential for, well, some shenanigans with that ETB, you know, some extra card advantage, essentially, some extra recursion with that. And then, of course, a really cool token that it is making, essentially. Again, when you are making a lot of junk tokens, you can get a lot of value, you can get swing a lot of creatures get even more junk tokens do a lot of cool and exciting things with those artifacts take advantage of them in a lot of different ways not just you know again that impulse draw but again ways to tap them like gear for ori ways to utilize you know the amount that you have in play like all the glitters etc etc so yeah some really exciting things that you can consider for a commander like this if you're interested in this commander make sure you check out that card list link in the description below of course as always thanks again and have a good one this show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you if you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. <laughs>